After a long, painful season, the Boston Celtics managed to make their way to the NBA Finals only to lose to the Golden State Warriors. Though star forward Jason Tatum had a rough time of it in the Finals, no one can deny he gave this season his all. Brad Stevens had a simple message for him, and we'll be covering what he said and much more in today's video. First up, Stevens' message and praise. Following the rough NBA Finals the Belts and Celtics had, the president of the team's basketball operations, Brad Stevens, had a very simple message to deliver to Jason Tatum. The message? get some rest, and go on vacation. Stevens reported he told Tatum this to interviewers in a video conference call shortly after the six-game loss to the Golden State Warriors, two games shy of winning the finals for the first time since the 2008-2007 season. That isn't all he had to say, though. He had some very big praise to lay onto Tatum's shoulders, telling the world that Tatum gave the Celtics everything he had, and that if you were to see the number of minutes played, you could tell that he's a superstar that always wants to be on the court. Apart from that, Stevens also addressed the low point in Tatum's form during the season, saying that Tatum himself would be the first person to critique them. Stevens, however, believes that there were other factors that were involved in those lows rather than Tatum simply not performing up to par. Now, why Tatum and the Celtics suffered. First, let's go over some facts about Tatum's record this postseason. He just came off being honored with a selection into the All-NBA First Team, and he had a strange playoff season with a lot of ups and downs. Despite that, he ended the postseason with the most turnovers any player has had in a single playoff season in the entirety of NBA history. That's insane when you consider he's just 24 years old, but we digress. In the finals, Tatum went on to shoot 50% from the field and under 40% four times against the Golden State Warriors. He also shot just around 32% on two-point shots. That wasn't indicative of just Tatum's performance in the finals, but the team as a whole. The lack of two-point shooting and playmaking played a major part in the Celtics falling short of making their mark on NBA history once again. But Stevens wasn't going to throw Tatum under the bus, choosing to highlight the positive impact that he's had on the team. In particular, Stevens made a point to praise Tatum and teammate Jalen Brown, stating that the team would not have been able to get to this point without them. As proof of that, he brought up Tatum's huge success at Milwaukee in Game 6 of the Eastern Conference Semifinals, scoring 46 points for the team that night. For Stevens, Brown and Tatum are objectively and historically amazing players, calling what they've done in the playoffs rarefied air. He also reiterated that the team could not have reached the height if it had, if it weren't for Tatum and his plays, despite the lows he suffered in the finals. Next, where the Celtics can improve. Finally, in the interview with reporters, Steven talked about why the Celtics fell short and what they had to do in order to improve. The two primary areas he saw as needing particular focus were more consistent bench scoring and playmaking across the entire roster. It's not enough to just have a few solid names on the board. Your entire team needs to be at top form. However, Stevens, always the diplomat, made sure to point out the Celtics were also bolstered in their success by the unique combination of size and versatility that their roster boasted. So even as they work on the areas he highlighted, he believes the team should remain aware of those strengths that should not be forsaken in lieu of other aspects. Stevens believes that doing so would be like walking a tightrope. You want to improve other areas of your game, but you don't want to be overcorrect and lose out on the strengths that had taken you so far as they did. For him, teams and the way they work together are fragile. A team's identity is difficult difficult to maintain if you're constantly changing things up, putting you at risk of losing out on what could be what makes it special. Just adding things doesn't mean you're not going to take something away as a result. If the Celtics are going to improve their game without falling through the baseline they've set this season, they're going to have to plan their next move out very carefully. Stevens concluded the interview by stating that no Celtics players will require surgery. That includes Robert Williams, who had to deal with soreness in his left knee throughout the playoffs, something that could have ended horribly but luckily didn't. Rest will likely be enough for the Celtics' entire roster to get back up to full strength after playing a 24 out of a total 28 possible games and an absolute gauntlet of a season. Now, in other news, Curry's fourth championship ring. Curry has been the star of the Golden State Warriors for eight years now, leading the team from success to success. In just eight years, the Warriors have been able to lock down four championship titles. It's been an insane run, and nobody can deny that Curry is an integral part of why the Warriors have made so much progress and have done what they have. Curry ended the season Season with 31.2 points, 6 rebounds and 5 assists, and averaged about 5.23 pointers per game. For that performance, he was deemed worthy of the season's Bill Russell NBA Finals MVP award. He now holds four championships rings, as legends LeBron James and Sha Shaquille O'Neal do. Only seven players, now including Curry, have had the honor of winning at least four championships, as well as two regular season MVP awards. It doesn't seem like Curry is going to slow down anytime soon either, and it's possible that he may soon surpass even Michael
Michael Jordan and Magic Johnson if he continues on in this form. Next, LeBron Logo Man card sells for millions. LeBron James is no doubt a legend in the world of basketball at this point. He began his career in 2003, and since then he's won four NBA championships, taking home the MVP award for each of those finals. He's been selected as part of the All-NBA First Team a whopping 13 times, and holds a number of second, third, and defensive team honors as well. But now, he's broken another, a different kind of record. A limited edition 2020-2021 Panini Flawless Triple Logo Man patch card recently went up for bidding at Golden Auction, and it went out to a buyer for a record-breaking $2.4 million. That's the highest sale price for a card that was pulled and sold within the same year. The card is special because it features NBA logo patches from each of his team's jerseys, the Cleveland Cavaliers, Miami Heat, and Los Angeles Lakers. And that just isn't a neat little showpiece, that's a piece of history that could go for an even bigger fortune later down the line. The founder of Golden Auctions, Ken Golden, told reporters that it was the holy grail of modern cards, being valued between three and five million dollars. The cards have been quite popular recently, with many scrambling to get some of the most famous player patches. Drake, who is a renowned rap artist, supposedly spent over $200,000 earlier this year when he purchased 14 boxes looking for rare cards. Unfortunately, Drake didn't have much luck, and the card went to J-Mo from Backyard Rips. Next, Matherin challenges LeBron James. It's not unheard of for newcomers to any industry to puff their chests out and put on an air of bravado in order to hype up both themselves and the audiences. But there's confidence, and then there's outright disrespect. We think most would consider what Indiana Pacers rookie Benedict Matherin did as being the latter. In a recent interview with the Washington Post, Matherin called out LeBron James, saying that he'd have to prove that he's a better player than him. Matherin doesn't think anyone could be better than him until he's actually seen them do so, and LeBron is no exception. The thing is, Matherin hasn't even played a single game yet in the NBA since he just got picked up by the Pacers this draft last week. Sure, he was 6th overall pick, but LeBron has experience. He might be old, but he's still averaging more than 30 points a game, with about 8.2 rebounds as well. Those aren't numbers you take lightly, and Matherin's challenge is more than likely going to end really badly for him. So far, the NBA's 2022-2023 season schedule hasn't been released, so it's not certain whether Matherin and James will get the chance to see each other on the court. If they do have a face-off coming up, Matherin's comments will definitely resurface around the day and end up being an embarrassing time for the rookie. And that's a wrap for this video. What are your thoughts on Jason Tatum's performance this season and during these finals? Let us know in the comments down below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.